In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the incredible new add-on, LensSim which upgrades your Blender camera into a realistic cinema camera. Using the new Ray Portal BSDF node, this add-on simulates real lens distortion based off the schematics of real lenses, including lenses used to shoot movies like Dune and the Batman. Here's some befores and afters. Oh wait, wrong one. Now, here's some before and afters in using this lens. Now just look at the difference it creates. It's incredible. So I think that's enough of an intro and I hope I have you guys hooked because you're gonna wanna stick around for this entire video because this add-on is just incredible and it's gonna change the way you and I render in Blender. So let's get into how this thing works. In Blender, you're gonna have to be using the most recent versions, either 4.2 or 4.3. Now I hadn't upgraded for a while, but I did it for this and it's definitely worth it. So make sure you go ahead and upgrade. Then to install the add-on, it's the same as usual. Just have to go to add-ons, go up here. It is a bit more hidden now in the newer versions, which I'm not sure if I like, but you just press install from disk, you select the zip file, you save your preferences, make sure it's ticked on, and now you will have the lens sim right here on the side in your end panel. Now all we have are two buttons. We can convert to a lens sim camera or create a lens sim camera. Normally I just like going create the lens sim camera. Now there are a couple of other things that come with this camera first. These little pieces here, that's just to show what the pieces of glass look like. It's purely cosmetic, don't worry about that. There's this thing as well, just to show where it is in space. And then lastly, this is pretty handy. This is the focus object that comes with the camera and you can just move that in and out and you will see the focus getting changed. As you can see here. Now, if you've picked up cameras before, you've done a bit of research into all of that, this add-on will definitely be a lot more intuitive for you, but it's still quite easy to learn if you haven't. So up here, we can pick from a variety of different lenses and don't worry if you don't know what all the words mean. Most of it is uh, brand names, but of course there's the 50 mil, 185 mil. That's like with your normal blender camera where you have the mil. Um, there is also the f-stop and that's the lowest you can go. Now the f-stop is how much light is being let into the camera, but most importantly, the lower the number, the more depth of field you can have, which means the closer you'll be to an object, the more blurry everything else will be around it. So if you wanna have that look, you can of course pick really low numbered lens. Another thing to keep into consideration when picking a lens is of course the millimeter. So maybe for this shot, I wanna do more of a zoomed in shot so I can just pick, for example, this 100 mil f2.0 German lens from 1936. So these lenses all work like an actual camera where light is being reflected through glass onto a sensor. And just to showcase that, you can click from this menu here, there's best fit focal length and center width. If you change the focal length, you can actually see what's happening where this light from our scene is being reflected through the, uh, the lens and onto our sensor. And because it's a circular lens, we can see that's what our image looks like. And when we set it back to best fit, it fills up our image. So it's always recommended to keep it to best fit, but you can always zoom out just a little bit with the focal length. However, you'll start to get some dark edges around the corners. There's also a quick and easy disable and enable lens button, just so you can see what it's actually doing to the image here. Um, this is what I've been talking about here with the lens and the sensor. So this is when you press render schematics, it's got this incredible looking, really cool way of visualizing it, which is just awesome. You can also turn on the light rays here. And so you can see how that is being processed with the sensor where the light's coming in, going through here and reaching the sensor here. And then if we turn up the f-stop, which is the next setting down here, what that is doing is increasing these red things here, which is like the iris of the camera. And as I said before, it's reducing the uh, depth of field and letting less light in through to the sensor. We can just turn off our render schematics quickly so I can see our image again, because another crazy thing this add-on has is chromatic aberration. So you can actually render your chromatic aberration into your image accurately with how the lens would actually be processing it. There's still a bunch more settings in the advanced settings tab here. However, before we get onto that, I'd like to talk some more about what I've been people talking online about. So the biggest thing is probably render time and the creator of this add-on, Havar Dalin, um, Sorry if I butchered the pronunciation. He's got a whole page about this on his Blender Market page. So personally, I've been testing this on a lot of my scenes 
and uh, my render times have kind of been in line with what he said on the Blender Market page, which is that it will increase it between 1.2 to 3 times. It's very much depending on the lens, the scene, and I've definitely at least seen maybe like 20 second increases, you know, 15 second, and then all the way up to like 2 minutes maybe. But um, I would definitely say if you want to keep your render times low, don't enable chromatic aberration pretty intense rendering. I would just do it post-production in DaVinci Resolve or After Effects or something like that. Another thing I found render-wise is I have been getting a couple more like fireflies in some of my renders. I think that's just Blender kind of struggling with uh, sending the light rays through the lens and it's just, you know, getting caught up or something. I'm not a render expert, but I probably need to throw some more samples at it. The other thing people have been talking about is like, why can't you just do this post-production, you know? And my biggest like kind of, not argument, but response to that is this is, you know, literal path tracing where it's actually calculating how it would work. So it's not, you know, faking lens effects, it's actually emulating and doing it, which is, I think is a big step up and something like incredible and really awesome. And I definitely think it's worth having it like in the scene because it definitely has some imperfect, creates some imperfections and stuff that you just don't get in post-production. Anyways, let's look at some more of these settings. Okay, so into the advanced settings. Now I'm not gonna go through all of them here. There is some good documentation on the Blender Market page and uh, Creative Shrimp, Gleb Alexandrov has a video and he goes through like all of the settings. So I'll link to those both below, but I'm just gonna go through the ones that I've tried out and are the most useful so far for me. First of all, this trash button here is really, really handy. It just resets all these settings that you might change because when you change to a different lens, you might not have the same settings, so you just delete it, very simple. Anyways, I really quickly wanted to talk about these two checkboxes because these are very important and they're the whole reason this add-on works as well as it does. The first one here is the compensate exposure. Basically, you can put your f-spot wherever you want and it will keep it the same uh, darkness. See if I turned it off and went up, it's all dark, but turn it back on, it looks great. So that's very important. The next one is the ray guiding. This is basically some mathematical thing that he, the creator has put in here so that the light rays are guided towards the lens opening and so that we don't waste computational power on rays not getting to or through the lens. It's pretty, pretty cool. Now the split diopter and the tilt shift would only be used for certain use case scenarios. The split diopter is one where you kind of have like two shots in focus at the same time. It's very cool to be able to do this in 3D because um, a lot of movies actually use this. And then the tilt shift lens, it makes massive buildings and stuff look like miniatures because it shifts the plane of focus. And then lastly, we have this emulation tab, which is kind of the coolest one of them all. The one that I've been using the most is the bloom and the glare. You can actually uh, chuck bloom and glare. Bloom is like making the lights pop a bit more and glare is almost like smearing Vaseline on the camera. It gets this kind of look, which is definitely quite intense. Here's a couple of renders I've did with the settings on. It is intense, but it's got such a cool, like old film look that I love. And, and you can always, uh, with this add-on, just type in a value. It does go above one, which is pretty cool. Then you have some pin cushion distortion, so you can, you know, grab some fisheye look to it. Then next in the blur, you can create this really cool uh, radial spinning blur effect and it just creates this incredible like bokeh effect and instantly your render just becomes something interesting. It's so cool. Next we have the anamorph and bokeh. So here you can actually turn your lenses into an anamorphic lens and change the aspect of the bokeh change the swirliness so you can get the background to be a bit more swirly. Well, let me just put in a number. So yeah, you kind of can just play around with this and get some really cool effects. And it's so customizable and you can just create a story with how the lens is just capturing your image that you've created, which is pretty cool. And then lastly, you have the depth of field factor. So you can just crank this up and increase how shallow and how much bokeh you can get in your image, which is, is such a cool feature. So then you can actually really see what this swirliness is doing. And I'm just blown away by how awesome this looks. Okay, this last tab here is the controversial tab. You might be wondering why it's called that. 
Um, it's actually because most of the settings on here, you don't want to touch because it could break the lens or the add-on. So the only one I would really go close to touching is maybe the global scale. If you make the number bigger, it means the scene is larger relative to the camera and vice versa. But the one that I've touched without realizing it could break it, but it didn't really, is the focal length add. So for example, this lens is built to be a 100 mil lens, but let's say, what if I want it to be even more zoomed in? I can just keep going and increase it, increase it, but I might be changing the effects it's adding, you know, changing the properties of what the bokeh looks like and just not keeping the lens to its original look. So you kind of just wanna leave that at zero and don't really touch it because if you want a more zoomed in lens, you can always just pick from one. Now there's a bunch of things in this lens data tab, uh, a lot of maths and a lot of um, things I don't understand like this. You can actually build your own lenses and stuff, which that's a whole other thing. And hopefully someone else will make a tutorial for that because I'm not gonna be doing that. The biggest thing here is probably the aperture shape. You can actually use an image and change how your aperture looks, which in turn changes how the bokeh in your scene look. And the handy thing is it comes with a bunch of really awesome ones. So for example, just to show this off even more, we can go back here, turn up the depth of field factor. Now you'll see our circles have now become stars. And we can change that and boom, it has this look, which is pretty damn cool. I'm gonna leave this depth of field factor at two. And now that you've seen all the settings, let's go through and have a look at some of these other lenses. I'm not gonna be able to go through all of them, but I'll list out the notable ones for you that I've tried. Uh, here we have the Helios 44. These lenses were actually used for the Dune movies, which is pretty cool. They have this swirling bokeh feature in the background here, which creates this amazing look. We also get quite a bit of optical vignetting. My favorite one is the German lens in 1936. I'll show a couple of renders from it. It just creates this really soft, halation -y feeling that I love. There's also quite a few awesome fish eyes that I'm definitely gonna be loving playing around with in certain environments. There's also this uh, Konica Hexanon I've been loving for some environment shots. And I mean, there's just so many. There's more anamorphics. This add-on is just filled with so many lenses and customization that I feel like invigorated with Blender again. And I want to go back to all my old scenes and like see what it looked like with this lens. It's just, it's just incredible. It's an amazing add-on and hopefully my video has done a justice. It's even more fun in Blender and looks even more incredible in Blender. So please make sure you do check out the add-on. There are links below. And the cool thing is it's quite simple. You don't really have to change much to get a good look out of it. It kind of is photorealism in one button, which I'm not the only one to say because it takes a lot more hard work than that. But for this, this lenses, it really is. Just so you guys know, the link below is an affiliate link, so it does support me if you buy from that link, so I do appreciate that. And while you guys are on Blender Market, make sure to check out my add-on, Trashed. There's a link below for it. You know, maybe you can check out and see how it looks with the lens effects. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out Trashed. And uh, I'm working on my short film currently. It's getting there. This lens add on has definitely motivated me to keep going with it because it's looking awesome. I might make a new video about some of these new scenes I've created, but otherwise, stay tuned for when the short film drops. And uh, yeah, keep going with Blender. You got this.